you're part of the family here. So we're going to give you a family welcome tonight in the name of the Lord. Make yourself at home. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Thank God for the Spirit of the Lord that's here tonight. Amen. And I just wholeheartedly agree with Brother Taylor. I think we'd, we'd, we'd do ourselves better if we thought about having more and got that on our mind. Amen. And it, it just, it'll, uh, it'll help us. Well, amen. Good to see everybody tonight. God's house. God bless you for being here. I, um, I know that this is, this is not a normal, say normal. You, you don't always have service on Sunday night. And so God bless you for being here tonight. And, uh, and I do mean that. I pray that God will bless you tonight for being in the house of the Lord. Now you got a week ahead of you that may be hectic and busy. Everybody's got a busy life, you know. You, you don't have to live downtown New York City to have a hectic life. Everybody's got a busy life now. So uh, you can live in North Alabama and have a New York life. I'm glad I'm not in New York. Thank you again for allowing us to be here and uh, appreciate this church. And Mr. Taylor. And uh, it's been a little while since we've been here. And as I say, I want to start to this. I don't call names. It was a little bit too long, to be honest. I'm just, I'm just taking a little bit. Victory Tabernacle is always on the top of my priority list. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bible tonight, you want to turn with me in God's Word. I'm going to go to the book of John, chapter 3. Verse number 30, John 3 and verse 3. Thank you so much for the nice room and the nice um, snack basket and all the goodies in there. Thank you very much. John 3 and 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. God, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Thank God for his word. Tonight, would you lift your hands with me and ask God to help us here for a little while? God, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for allowing us to be in your house tonight. Ready to be help you. Help your people. Help us, God, to do your will, accomplish your purpose and plan. In Jesus' name, let the love of God fill this place. Let the love of God fill this service tonight. Let the Holy Ghost fill this temple. We'll give you praise, and we'll give you glory, and we'll give you honor tonight. I magnify you, and I thank you for it. I bind every spirit of opposition. Loose the Holy Ghost to have its way. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for it, God. We thank you for it, God. Can we clap our hands to the Lord together? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Help us, oh God, you're welcome in this house now. Jesus name. Everybody say in Jesus name and you may be seated. Thank you for standing.
I think somebody beside you. Tell them the wind's going to blow. You got to take advantage of the wind. When the wind of the Spirit blows, it's up to every one of us to take advantage of the Holy Ghost wind. Amen. I read of a in an ancient city in Greece stood a statue and it had wings. And it had, oddly, a lock of hair that came off the statue's forehead. And he was bald in the back. It sounds odd. And underneath the statue were chiseled out in Greek letters these questions and answers. Who made thee? Scipius made me. What is thy name? My name is opportunity. Why hast thou wings that I may fly swiftly over the earth? Why hast thou a forelock on thy head that men may seize me as I come? Why art thou bald on the back of thy head? Because when I am gone, no man can lay hold on me. I'm opportunity. That's, um, we don't really believe in mythology and all that sort of stuff. But it does represent opportunity to a degree. That when opportunity comes, you've got to get it while it's coming. That's what opportunity is. You take advantage of that particular time. Because once opportunity is gone, you can't get opportunity back. You can't, you can't get it back. Our English word that I've read, that, that uh, the word opportunity comes from a old Latin word that means toward the port. Toward the port. And what it's denoting and suggesting is, is how a ship has to take advantage of the wind. And, and uh, it has to use the wind to push it safely to the harbor or toward the port or to its destination that it's trying to get to. And when the wind blows, you've got to be able to take advantage of the wind because you, you can't... The wind only blows in a certain direction. It's not going to come back for you. you you gotta, you got to get it while it's coming. You gotta, in, in a way, you gotta kind of be able to, to har harness the wind when it when it blows across your vessel, and you've got to be able to allow that wind to push you into the direction that you're trying to go. Amen. So, what they would what they would try to suggest is is when the wind blows, you need to have your sails already up. Amen. You don't wait till the wind starts blowing and then start raising your sails and tell everybody on your ship, hey, the wind's blowing. Everybody get your sails up. By the time you get your sails up, the wind's gone. Amen. So what we have to do, we have to be ready before the wind ever blows. We have to have our sails up. We have to have ourselves out, and we have to be ready for the wind of the Spirit to blow in our lives, in our hearts, in our families, in our churches, and be prepared to take advantage of the wind of the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. 
and amen. So what we learn, and I'm certainly, I'm certainly not one that's an expert on on sailing or anything of that of that uh, nature. However, I'm smart enough to know that that if you want to go somewhere, you get ready to go somewhere, and you have everything on that ship ready. So when what comes what you're looking for, you are prepared to take advantage of that and let that push you into the direction that you want to go. Amen. Even though you want to go in a certain direction, if you're not prepared to go in that direction, then you're going to have a hard time taking advantage of the things that's going to prepare you into the direction that you want to go. So sometimes you've got to get your sails up and you've got to get your sails out when the wind is still and when you seem like you're stuck in the doldrum and you can't feel nothing and the air is dry, you got to tell somebody, go ahead and get it up because the wind's eventually going to blow. And when the wind blows, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to take advantage of the Holy Ghost. Oh, let's clap our hands, everybody. Hallelujah, when the Holy Ghost blows, we've got to be in step with it. When the Spirit of God moves, we've got to be in tune with it, and we've got to be ready for the wind of the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Every opportunity has a shelf life, and every opportunity has an expiration date on it. And so opportunities don't last forever. When they come, you've got to be, you've got to be willing to take advantage of that opportunity. I read a while back of two men that lived back in the early days of America. And this is when the West wasn't all settled, and, and and they put out a bounty on wolves because wolves were ravaging homes and crops and livestock, and they put out a bounty on wolves that every every wolf that was killed and brought in, they were giving them so much money, and. Uh, Sam and Jed wanted to get rich, and they scurried out into the hills and the forest seeking their treasure. One night, they fell asleep as they were trying to track wolves and hunt them down and get several thousand dollars. And they fell asleep and in the woods, dreaming of their new riches that they were going to get when they tracked these wolves down. And suddenly, suddenly Sam awoke in the middle of the night. And in the middle of the night, he opened his eyes and turned his head and he saw that they were surrounded by 50 wolves with flaming eyes and bared teeth and growling breath that had surrounded so Sam nudged Jed. He said, wake up, man. We're rich. You have to be prepared to take advantage of things. You have to be prepared to, when it comes, don't see it as an opposition, but see it as an opportunity when it comes your way. Hallelujah. Sometimes the devil likes to take opportunities that God gives us and he tries to pervert them and turn them around and tries to make us think this is an obstacle. This is not an opportunity. But I think God has given us opportunities if we we'll see them as such and see them as opportunities and say, hey, God, this is just something else you're going to give me to take advantage of. This is just something else you're going to give me to help me get the way I'm going. I'm trying to get some help. I'm trying to get to a place, and I'm going to be willing to take advantage of every opportunity that I can. Oh, anybody got to show us up on Sunday night? Come on, anybody, I'm going to be ready. I want to be ready. I 
I'm no expert on sailing, Brother Dale, but I know they don't just have one sail. Big ships, they got a bunch of sails. They got sails around the middle. They got sails down below the deck or by the deck. They got sails way up. Way up there, they got sales. They got sales that go way out to the right. And they got sales that go way out to the left. You know what that means? The wind don't have to come right to where I am. But if I can get to where it's at, it can help prepare me to where I want. Somebody said, I'm not. We don't have to spend our lives just sitting up there at the same spot and say, hey, like I don't matter how you are, and you're right, and you're true, and you don't matter how you are. Your sin needs to be right out here. Your sin needs to be right out here. And your sin needs to be right here. And you need to say, if it gets me anywhere in my vicinity, I'm going to catch the rain. I'm going to take advantage of the rain and the spirit. Oh, somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody said, Amen. Our mindset needs to be that God, if the wind of the Spirit gets anywhere in my vicinity, I'm going to have sails as far as I can out. I'm going to have sails as far as I can hide. And I'm going to do my best to take advantage of the wind. I can't even feel the wind up there when it blows up there. But I'm going to reach up to the wind. And I'm going to take advantage of the wind as well up there. I need to know. I'm trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to reach my point. I'm trying to reach my destination. And I need to know the spirit. Hallelujah. The wind, the wind blows over here, 
and I'm over here. I need to get my sail over there. That makes sense. I don't need to have one little sail. This is my target. If the wind don't blow here, it ain't real wind. It ain't real hard to go to hit me right here. But when it blows over there, if you really need the wind of the Spirit in your life, and it blows on Brother Sam, 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 we can say over here, say, hey, I need seven eight women. I need seven eight women. I need seven eight person. I'm trying to get seven eight women. I'm trying to get seven eight women. I'm trying to reach my point. 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 I'm trying to reach my Jesus, Jesus was going to the house of Jairus to heal his daughter. And all of a sudden there was a woman that had an infirmity for 12 long years. She made up in her mind. She said, you know what? I've been bound by the law. I've been bound by tradition, and I've been bound by this infirmity. And this is a woman with an issue of blood. For 12 years, she had been put in one spot because of the law. She couldn't mingle with society. Because of the law, she couldn't go where everybody else went. So the law and her disease isolated her, and it ostracized her, and it kept her in one location, so to speak. What if she had made up in her mind I'm not going to get healed unless the wind blows my door down. Unless the wind blows in my house. That's the only way I'm going to accept healing. But after 12 years of the wind not blowing to where she was, and she found out that the wind is blowing to Jesus, and the wind is blowing to his door, I believe if I can get my son over there. And it's not talking about Jesus. And it's not getting mad at Jesus. If I could get myself in that direction, I could catch some of that love. And I could catch some of that healing. And I could catch some of that miracle. God will bless anybody. But if you get to say, you can get some of that blessing. You can get some of that virtue. If you want to take advantage of the land of the Spirit. With blind by the mess. The wind didn't blow right down his right down his alley. It come close, but it didn't come right to him. All of a sudden, part of me has heard the wind over here. It sounds like Jesus coming. Sounds like that multitude. I hear the talk of miracles and signs and wonders. And I sat here on the highway side. I'd be crazy to let the wind blow this close and to keep my sails close to my chest. Well, I'll tell you what, if the wind's going to blow this close to me, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to pull my sail off that way a little bit. Come on, somebody, get your sails off. Get your sails up. If you can take advantage of the wind, you can, you can be prepared to do your part. Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus. 
while Jesus was passing by, the wind blowing by, Bartimaeus began to cry out to the Lord, Oh, who about son of David? He said, Have mercy upon me. Hallelujah. You know the story about as well as I do. The men came to Bartimaeus and they said, Hey, man, this ain't your win. This is somebody else's. This ain't the time for you to get a miracle. You need to fold yourselves up and put them back in your little tent and close your mouth and be quiet because this ain't time for you to be blessed. Hallelujah. The Bartimaeus makes up his mind and he said, you know what? I'm going to cry out big nuts tomorrow. I'm going to get my cell out. I'm going to get my cell out. There's no monopoly on the realm of the Spirit. Nobody has control of the realm of the Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost realm. It's God's realm. And it's just as good for me as it is for anybody. And I'm going to take advantage of the world. Somebody say it, amen. But, but, you know, in preparation for this message, I read, and this was, this was fascinating to me. I didn't know. Maybe some of you knew this, but I, this was news to me. That, that the wind that pushes a ship the fastest and pushes them in the direction and gives them the most speed is not the wind that is directly behind them. I thought that'd be the case. I thought the wind that got right behind the ship and pushed it would be the wind everybody was looking for to push them and give them the most velocity and speed. But when I read about sailing, it said the wind that everybody looks for is the cross wind. Because when the wind blows across the vessel, that it pushes it where it needs to go, and it gives it more speed, the cross wind. We don't like the cross wind. I'd rather the wind be right by. But oh, when the cross wind blows, and it blows across you. Oh, Lord, what was that? Where'd that come from? I'd rather you be pushing me back. Don't cross me, Lord. No, don't, don't do that. But what the devil don't tell you is the cross wind. That's why they're going to get you the most velocity and push you in the direction that you need. And maybe I'm preaching to people here on Sunday night. You scratch in your head and you say, God, what just happened? Where did that come from? Well, what's going on here? But the Lord is saying, it's my cross wind. I'm trying to prepare you. What do you want you to do? I'm trying to push you in the direction that I need you to go. Get your soul out. Get your soul out. Take advantage of the Lord. Sarah the woman stepped out of Cain, that pagan land, and the wind was blowing. She put herself in. Thought she was going to catch that wind. Oh, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me, she said. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. She's not a Jew. She's a Gentile. She's a pagan woman. The disciples come to the Lord, and they say, oh, Lord, you know what? We probably just need to send her on out of here. We ain't got time for her. This ain't her win. This ain't her deliverance. This ain't her miracle. She can't steal this. She got herself in the wrong spot. This ain't got nothing to do with it. Amen. 
Jesus said, I've only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the Bible said that she's coming, she's crying unto him. And the Bible said he answered her not a word. Don't, don't get God's silence mixed up. Sometimes we look at God's silence as a refusal. But it's not always a refusal. Just because God got quiet don't mean God got quit. God don't ever quit. He may be quiet, but he had quit. He's still working when he's silent. He's still moving when he's not talking. Hallelujah. And the Bible said he answered her not a word. Came again, and she said, Lord, help me. My daughter is really in fact with the devil. And the wind is blowing. She's putting her sails out. And she's looking for the wind to get right behind her. But instead of getting behind her, <laughs> it crosses her. And he said, it's not meat for me to take the children's bread. And to give it to dogs. Boy, that cross one to get you if you need to. That's, that's not the wind I needed. And that's not the I was looking for the wind just to get right behind me and pat me on the back and say, man, you're okay. You're right about everything you're thinking about. You're right on track. And, and you got a right to do this. And you got a right to do that. And you're, you you got a right to be mad. And you got a right. Yeah, you get come on, Lord, agree with me and hold my hand and get right behind me. Sometimes the Lord crosses it. And he said, it's not meat for me to take the children's bread and to give it to dogs. But here was a woman that knew I got to get it while it's coming. I got to take advantage of this wind. And she came and worshipped him. And she said, truth the Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their masters. Tell the Lord, eat the wind that we can get a hold of. We've got to be able to take advantage of the wind. Come on, God, speak to me. Come on, God, be with me. Come on, God, talk to me. I'm trying to get to my prayer. I'm trying to get to my destination. I need the Holy Ghost to blow out of my vessel and to blow out my heart and my life and my heart. Let's lift our hands and all together tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Praise God, praise God, praise God. One more time, I'm not going to be a whole lot long. Let's all put our hands up high to the Lord right here. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, why don't we stand our feet and put our hands up right now? Well, if you feel like sticking about me, I'll be a good kid too. Hey, Lord. I need to take advantage of the Holy Ghost. I need to lay under the Spirit. I need a move of God. I need a touch of heaven in my soul. I need to get to my destination. Hallelujah. 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 Let's worship him together here. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, God. I glorify your name, O Lord. I magnify the name of the Lord. I praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, I feel like somebody's coming out of the bedrooms. I feel like somebody's coming out of the spare place. Hey, God, I got myself up. I got myself up. I'm trying to reach my point. I'm trying to reach my destination. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
sensitive to God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. God, the tide's pushing me back. It's pushing me back out to sea. I don't want to be there. I want to be in my destination. I want to be in my port. I say, get your sails up. I say, the wind's about to blow. Push me, prepare me to my, to my plan and my destination. tonight, and you say, God, I've been trying to get somewhere. I've been close. I've been close, and every time I feel like I'm almost there, the tide comes in, and it seems to push me out, and it seems to push me back. And while I'm fighting the tide, I forget about the sail. While I'm fighting the, everything around me and the wind, the, the, the waves that's pushing me back, uh, you know, I can I lose focus of the sail, but I need to focus more on the wind instead of the tide. I need to focus more on the spirit uh, instead of all the opposition that's trying to push me back. Uh, I need to get my focus back on the Holy Ghost, uh, get my focus back on the wind uh, of the spirit, uh, because that's what's going to get me over this tide uh, that's pushing me back. Uh, it's going to prepare me to my destiny. I'm going to say to my poor Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're here tonight, so I'm trying to get somewhere. I feel like but like I'm trying to move in a certain direction, but there seems to be opposition that keeps pushing me and pushing me and pushing me back. But I need the wind of the Spirit to move in my life and to propel me to that place that God's calling me to. I need the Holy Ghost power to move in my life. You know what? The devil, the devil wants to suspend, to spend our time on the vessel, hailing water. Water out that the waves are pushing overboard into the ship. He wants us to lose focus. And if you can catch that wind, it will push your whole vessel to your port and to your destination. But while we're peddling water and dealing with this and dealing with this, the tide's pushing us back. And the Lord's saying, if you'll focus on the Spirit, if you'll focus on the Holy Ghost, if you'll focus on my power, it can overpower the tide. And it can push you out of the tide. And it can get to your destination and to your part. If there's anybody here today that says, hey, God, I'm tired of just peeling the water. I need the Holy Ghost to propel me. I need the Spirit of God to push me. There's my destination right there. It's waiting on me. I can see my dock. I can see my landing. I can see it right there. I don't want to get backwards. My sails are here. My sails are here. I need the Lord to push me into that place. I don't feel like just lingering the point here tonight. If you feel like God is talking to you in this house on this Sunday night, God, I want the wind of the Spirit to blow. I want the Holy Ghost to help me. I need the Spirit of God to move in my life. 
if, if you feel like God may be dealing with you or talking to you, I want you, as they begin to play and sing something here, out of response, not to the preacher, but out of response to the Word of God and the call of the Spirit. I want you just to slip out of your pew and just make your way to this front right now. And I, I want you to lift your hands high, put your hands out, and say, God, I'm setting my sails from this night forward. Because the wind, the wind is going to overpower this tide, and it's going to push me to my plan. It's going to push me to my destination. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, will you come join us here and lift your hands up to God? Lift your hands up to Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, if you need the Holy Ghost, if you need deliverance, God, I feel like I'm almost there, but I need something to get me over the hump. I feel like I'm almost there, but I need something to push me through. I need the wind to blow. I need the Holy Ghost to move. I need the Spirit of God to work. I need the Spirit of God to work. I need the Holy Ghost to work. He can tell them under the way under the bush, so talk to the Lord about it. Come on, can we all lift our hands up to heaven right now? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. 